Welcome back. It is Domain 3 on Poetry. We are on Lesson 2, This is Just to Say, and from Variations on a Theme by William Carlos Williams. Our objectives for this lesson are to identify the tone of a poem and discuss its effect on the poem's overall message and to compose our own poems with an emphasis on presenting two different tones in your work. Some key vocabulary to consider. We have beams, which are thick pieces of wood or steel. A theme is a main point or topic. A variation is a different approach to a topic. Excerpt is a small part of a larger work. For example, one chapter of a novel or one paragraph of a news article. And a tone is the attitude of a piece of writing expressed through the style of writing and the words the author chooses to use. So before we get into that, we're going to talk about insincerity and sincerity. So in writing, as in speaking, tone indicates the speaker's attitude toward some, something and can help explain the speaker's feelings. There are many kinds of tones, but the two we're going to focus on are sincere and insincere. When people are sincere, they're genuine and say what they mean. So they're more authentic. So this picture right here is an example of sincerity. When people are insincere, they're not, they are inauthentic and say something other than what they mean. So as you can tell, this little girl is showing insincerity. She said something but crossed her fingers, meaning she didn't actually mean it. So one kind of insincerity is actually sarcasm, in which one says the opposite of one what one really means. So sarcasm is often used to make fun of something, or it can be very insincere and unkind. So the next part of the lesson, we're going to look at the poem by William Carlos Williams. Williams was a doctor who lived in New, York, New Jersey and wrote poems in his spare time. Williams particularly liked to write poems that reflected experiences in the everyday world. The poem in today's lesson has an everyday feel. In fact, it sounds most like, like, mostly, almost like a note Williams might have written to someone. Before we get into that, we're going to do his biography. William Carlos Williams was born in 1883 in Rutherford, New Jersey. His mother and father encouraged him at a young age to pursue a career in medicine, despite his talent in, for writing. While pursuing his medical degree in the, at the University of Pennsylvania, he met the famous poet Ezra Pound, who remained an ally and influence throughout his career. After becoming a doctor, Williams drew inspiration from the patients that visited his office. His wife, Flossie, remembered, remembered he loved being a doctor, making house calls, and talking to people. His observations propelled him to write poetry focusing on the lives of normal people. Known for his imaginative, experimental, and original style, though he wrote several books of poetry, including Spring and All, Patterson, and Pictures for Bruegel and other poems that influenced the world of poetry. He continued to write until his death in 1963. Okay, I'm going to pause for about five seconds, so feel free to pause my video at any time to reread the poem. As I've said in the previous lesson, it's very important to reread a poem more than once for better understanding. So what is happening in stanza one? So re quick review of stanzas. Remember, stanzas are the pieces that are broken up into pieces. If you notice, this poem actually has three of them, we, and we have our stanza breaks right here. So in stanza one, the speaker ate fruit from the refrigerator. Based on stanza two, what does the speaker think the you was going to do with the plums? He believes the other person planned to eat the plums for breakfast. Describe in your own words what that conflict is. The speaker ate the food that the other person wanted. It's a very simple uh, conflict. How does the speaker describe the plums in the, poem, the poem's last three lines? And remember, lines are these pieces. So each of these is a line. So those three, they, so this is his description. He described them as delicious, sweet, and cold. So another poet named Kenneth Koch read William Carlos's Williams poem that this is just to say, and he was inspired to write his own poem. So this lesson also includes a section of his poem, which is based on William's poem. While reading the poem, think about the tone of its speaker. So Kenneth Koch actually read the poem and said, wow, I want to write my own. So we're going to read just an excerpt of it. It's very short. It's not meant to be long. Um, and it's referring to uh, William Carlos Williams's poem. But before we do, let's read uh, Kenneth Koch, his uh, biography. Kenneth Koch was born in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1925. He remembered writing his first poem at age five. 
I don't know where I got the idea for it. It rhymed and everything, and I showed it to my mother, and she threw her arms around me and kissed me. Later in high school, he was encouraged by his English teacher to experiment with language and free verse poetry. After, after high school, he fought in World War II. After returning from the war, he enrolled in Harvard University. Koch published many books of poetry over his career, including Poems, Co., and Season on Earth, and The Art of Love. Koch became known for an inspiring known as an inspired teacher of creative writing and of poetry at a public school in New York City. His poetry was known for its lyricism, formal formal experimentation, and humor. Kenneth Koch died in 1992. So this is the excerpt we're going to read from, um, from Variations. So, I chopped down the house that you have been saving to live in next summer. I'm sorry, but it was morning and I had nothing to do, and its wooden beams were so inviting. So what is the speaker in this one apologizing for? Well, he's apologizing for chopping down the house. What reason did the speaker give for doing this? It was morning, he had nothing to do, and they were kind of like, hey, let's do this. So what does this tone of, of the speaker, and what details showed you that? Well, the exam, so the tone is kind of apologetic, and the example is that, you know, he might be chopping, a, chop, chopping down a house is an extreme thing to do, so he might be almost exaggerating and, and like, almost sarcastic. Oh, yeah, I did that because, you know, it's just there. Why not? And things like that. So it's, this one's a more of an insincere version of a poem. So think about the following questions. Have you ever done something that you've had to apologize for? Have your parents ever made you apologize? Have you ever said you were sorry, but not really meant it? Have you ever said it sorry, but did mean it? That's what you're going to focus on for your poem for today. So you're going to write a poem of apology, but you're going to actually experiment with those two different tones we talked about, that sincerity and insincerity. So you're going to actually, you can actually use your own experience or you can create your own. Um, it depends on um, how creative you want to get with that. So. As I said, you're going to think about these questions going forward to write your apology. So think about a time or think about something that deserved an apology, even if you don't didn't know it was wrong or hurtful. Who did you apologize to? How might that have hurt them? And why why would you have performed that? Why would you have done that? Now you're gonna be writing a sincere one and a insincere one. And this is gonna be a lot of fun. So the first poem you're going to write is going to be insincere. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to write an apology. You're going to say what what did you what are you apologizing for? Why did it hurt them? Who did who are you apologizing to? And how can you show that sincerity and care that it actually meant something to you that you're apologizing? Then you're going to flip it and you're going to try it in a different tone. You're going to write the same kind of poem, except this time you're going to do it with insincerity almost like you're apologizing but you don't really mean it so you have to kind of twist your words that's what that last part of this shows what words or details in this poem show the speaker's sarcasm how are you going to flip the poem to show that snarkiness and how you don't really mean the apology so for this assessment that you're going to be working on you have two poems to write you're going to write your sincere poem and your insincere poem and feel free to rewatch this video at any time to help you figure out what you want to do for it and to review the questions and uh, thoughts um, that might help you to uh, write your poem and we will see everyone in our next lesson